You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. Why genre matters? First sight, it seems a silly question. Genre is such a simple concept. Maybe the problems with the word. It's difficult to pronounce. Somehow or other, Jean just isn't English. It's not John, it's not Jan, it's not Jean. It's Jean. And then putting a R on the end makes it worse. But the actual idea is dead simple. A genre is a sort or a kind. Ce genre d'animal, this kind of animal. Unique de son genre, one of a kind. So, genre is a sort or a kind. So why do sorts or kinds matter in studying the Bible? Here too it's fairly simple. If you know what you're studying, then you can study it better. Think about planting stuff. It helps to know whether you're planting a tomato or an oak tree you treat them differently. It's just the same, so we've recognized with texts, whether spoken or written. If you know what you're reading or hearing, it helps you to understand it. Take, for example, Amos chapter 4, verses 4 to 5. Come to Bethel and transgress, to Gilgal and multiply transgression. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Bring a thank offering of leavened bread, proclaim free will offerings, publish them, for so you love to do, O people of Israel, says the Lord God. It's straightforward enough, but you get the point a little bit sharper, pun intended, if you recognize that this is of the sort or kind, the genre, of what we call a priestly Torah, a piece of instruction given by priests. The typical shape of a piece of instruction given by priests, a priestly Torah, is a series of instructions of things to do, mainly connected with worship, followed by the reason for doing them, a theological reason. So, bring your sacrifices, uh, make sure the bull you offer is spotless, and all those sort of instructions, and then, because I'm the Lord your God who made everything, or be kind to widows and orphans, because I'm the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt a series of instructions usually about ritual or worship and then a theological reason that grounds those instructions and that's just what we've got here come to Bethel, to Gilgal, bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days a thank offering of leavened bread, proclaim free will offerings, publish them a series of instructions about ritual or worship and then the reason but not a theological reason, an anthropological reason for so you love to do, O people of Israel. What Amos is doing is taking the genre, the sort or kind of speech that we call a Torah, a priestly instruction, and he's twisting it out of shape. He's twisting it out of shape, firstly by exaggerating it. Bring your tithes every three days. There were three yearly tithes. Bring your sacrifices every morning. That was the annual, the big annual sacrifice. And then through the theological reason, for so you love to do. It's got nothing to do with God, your worship. It's all your business. It's what you want to do. So Amos takes the shape of a priestly Torah, the genre of a priestly Torah, the sort of speaking or writing of priestly instructions, and he changes it. Series of instructions, come to Bethel, to Gilgal, bring your sacrifices, thank offering, proclaim free will offerings, publish them, and then instead of a theological reason, a reason grounded in God, we get an anthropological reason, a reason grounded in human beings. And the whole thing is twisted out of shape, and it hits home. These Israelites are worshipping for their own reasons. They're not worshipping God to worship God. They're worshipping God because it's in their own interest to do so. Well, we know people like that, don't we? And unfortunately, not too far from home. You see... Knowing what you're dealing with, knowing the genre of the speech or writing, the sort or kind it is, helps you to understand it. That's why genre matters. See you again. God bless.